This is Will Spencer from the Renaissance of Men here for the New 21 Report with Melissa Isaac. It's nice to meet you. Good to meet you. Thanks for coming to speak at the 22 convention, yes? Oh yeah, it was great. That's the first time I think I've spoke to a group of women where they were actually receptive. <laughs> oh wow. What was, did you have a title of your talk? Um, my title was Divorcing Feminism. So oh, wow. I'm a men's rights attorney. Mm -hmm. I only represent dads for the most part, try mm -hmm. to. And so, um, well, we, you know, we have women that call our office and, and you know, some people say, well, you're against, you know, equality for moms and we're not. But, you know, men need a place where they can go and be completely understood. And so that's the business I've built, tried to build over the years. Mm -hmm. What did you think of the women here? You said they were really receptive to what you had to say, um, but there's some pretty harsh truths in, in the message about men's rights. What was their reaction like when you shared with them some of the things that you know? You know, I can look out there and I can watch the women and they were shaking their heads. And they were like, you know, a couple women said, yes, like somebody said it. And then you, you say it with, with truth and you say it when being assertive because it's, it's right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, here's the thing is I think we as women, we, we're, we're biological beings, just like men are biological beings. And there's almost an imprint, I think, on our souls and on our hearts as to what, what we want. And, you know, biologically, I think we're, we're created to be mothers, we're created yeah. to be wives, and we, we go against that. We face a lot of internal consternation, we face, face societal consternation, and it comes out. We're seeing it now, right? Mm -hmm. the, the rate of mental illness is skyrocketing, divorces are skyrocketing. Women think that they're, they're successful because they're, they're business women and they're, you know, educated, but they're some of the most miserable women in history. So we're seeing the consequences of that, of us going against who we are, just biologically. It's pretty stunning, right, to, mm -hmm. to get to witness that. And then I can understand it's really refreshing to sit down with women who are like, yeah, no, I get it, and they're not going to come at you and argue with you about it. Well, you know, absolutely. In, in court, I will ask these women sometimes, what makes you the better parent? You're saying you want sole custody. What makes you the better parent? And they say, well, because I gave birth to these children. No. So, okay, so we've established that you have a vagina, so let's get past that. What makes you the better parent? What makes it in the best interest of your children to only see their dad four days a month mm -hmm. is what you're advocating for. So you, you, you throw these truths out there. Okay, we've established that you have a vagina. Mm -hmm. a vagina. Let, let, let's, let's get over that. <laughs> we got the plumbing. Did you just, what, what did you just say? No, I just said what was true. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we have this, the society has evolved into, we don't want to say anything to be offensive. Even if it's true, you can't say it if you're going to offend somebody. And of course, politics, our politicians have gotten behind that. So we're, we're in a mess. We need to speak the truth. No matter who it offends, you need to speak the truth. I think some people are actually, they are permitted to say things that offend people. It's just that other people aren't permitted to say things that offend people. Well, that's true. So let's reverse that. Let's say you were an attorney in court and you said to a woman, okay, we've established that you have a vagina. Mm -hmm. Do you think you would be well received? Probably not. Right. So, and that's one thing I've noticed over the years too is, you know, my firm where we're a firm of women, mm -hmm. and um, we feel a little more comfortable going in and attacking these these feminist views. These, and I call them the feminazi views. Mm -hmm. Attack, you know, attacking these views because I, as a woman, I don't need to be told that I'm oppressed. I'm not oppressed. I live in America. This is one of the most. I, I, privileged countries that there is, especially if you're a woman. It's a woman's world. Mm -hmm. And you go saying those things, you go against what's shoved down our throats by the media, by television programming, by education, by the field, mental health field, by the legal field. We're, we're told that no women are oppressed. Women still don't have equal opportunity. That's a huge lie. Mm -hmm. It's a big lie. And so the women that you speak to here at the 22 convention, did you get a chance to talk to them outside of the, outside of the conference room, like one-on-one? -on -one? What, what were some of the things they said if you did? I did. Um, most were very receptive. There was one woman, and actually this is before I even spoke. We were coming down the elevator together. Mm -hmm. And she said, are you speaking today? And I said, I am. And she said, well, I just want you to know I'm already triggered by you. And I said, okay. I said, well, but I appreciate you still being here feeling triggered, okay, so I, I don't know if she read my bio, I don't know, but I'm already triggered her. But what I really like is that, you know, I think everybody here, most of the women here say, you know, I, I drank this Kool-Aid and then I woke up. Mm -hmm. And some women woke up in their 40s, some women woke up younger where they were still young enough to have a family and sort of set aside all the superficial societal stuff that shoved down their throats. But it's, I see these women in a state of evolution mm -hmm. where there's some that are further along than others. And it just yesterday, the same woman who said I triggered her 
tried to challenge me on a couple things. Mm. And I was very direct. Mm -hmm. I don't think she liked the directness of it, but you know, I'm, I'm not here to uh, sugarcoat anything, right? Mm -hmm. We see what sugarcoating does. It's sort of, um, it just, it, can t it kicks the can down the road. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, keeps the truth from coming out. So, but the way I see these women, as they are, they're in various, various stages of evolution coming mm -hmm. out of the brainwashing that is feminism. I'm triggered by you. <laughs> Well, that's good. I'm glad you're still here. Yeah, we're going to get through this together. <laughs> we'll get it through <sighs> Okay. <laughs> Have you gotten the chance to interact with any of the men speakers for 21 Con or, or 21 Patriarchs? Yeah, so I, I know a lot of the speakers just from being a part of the men's rights movement mm -hmm. over the past, you know, 15 years or so. And these are some of the best men you'll ever meet. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think people, when people criticize the men's rights movement, they'll say, well, they're just a bunch of child abusers or just a bunch of men who don't want to pay child support bunch of wife beaters, but when you listen to these men speak, yeah. they're some of the most educated, well-versed, experienced men where you can ask them any question and you're going to get an amazing answer. Mm -hmm. So this has nothing to do with oppression of women, this has nothing to do with trying to be above a woman, it has nothing to do with that. This is about being able to be who you are as a man, express your masculinity, because the only toxic masculinity or the worst type of to toxic masculinity is the absence of masculinity. Absolutely. And by the way, women don't want a man who's not masculine. They can mm -hmm. say whatever they want to say. Women don't want a man that's submissive to them. They don't respect that. Women don't want to have sex with a non-masculine man. Mm -hmm. So no, no matter what message is you know, going at men from society, I think ultimately you look at you look at relationships, right? You, men were created a certain way. Women were created a certain way. We were meant to complement each other. You and I are not equal, right? Mm -hmm. You cannot bear a child, right? Um, there's, there's things that you can do physically that in my best shape I'll never be able to do, mm -hmm. right? But it doesn't mean we have less value, right? right? Because we're not equal doesn't mean we're less valuable. So, you know, when I was in the military, I'm, I'm, I'm in the military now in the reserve component, but when I was active duty, there were things that I physically could not do. Mm -hmm. It didn't hurt my feelings. I didn't get offended, right? I didn't raise my hand and say, hey, we need to change the rules mm -hmm. because I'm not able to do this. I just wasn't able to do it. And I, I, you know, I weighed 110 pounds. There's things I just couldn't do. And I really appreciated the male soldiers that picked up my slack. They did not have to do that. Um, you know, I, I, I love my country, I love the military, I love being a part of the military. But in a sense, women being included in the military have also hurt the military. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I certainly acknowledge that. Mm -hmm. So we look at the speakers here, and we look at what their message and what they're saying. It makes sense. And you'd have a hard time refuting anything they're saying. They're, like I said, they're very well educated, they're well researched, and they've got the experience behind them. And how about the male attendees? Have you gotten the chance to interact with them? Have they come up and said thank you or recognize you? Oh, d definitely. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. And you know, there's some women I think who say, "Well, I wouldn't be around that many men. That would be that would be terrifying." Or how can you stay around these men? Like, they're, they're, these men are basically trying to tell you that you're not important, that you're less important. Again, I've been in this a part of this movement for about 15 years, longer than that. I just didn't know it. It, it just wasn't yeah. really organized for me, um, but. That's not who these men are. Mm -hmm. these, these, these are men who want to be respected as men, who respect others as men, they respect women as women, but they just want to live who they are. They just want to be a man in society and not be attacked for that. Some great men here. Mm -hmm. What has been your impressions of the conference overall? The conference has been great. Mm -hmm. It's been great. The quality of everything has been great. Um, quality, especially the speakers, I mean the food, the camaraderie, I think it really facilitated an atmosphere of fellowship. Mm -hmm. And that's really, that's a great thing about these conferences is you get to come in fellowship with like-minded people. Has anything here surprised you or you know, caught you by surprise in a good way? Yeah, I think the quality of the women who attended the conference really mm -hmm. was surprising to me. And I say that because I'm very outspoken and very direct um, on social media, in the courtroom, you name it, on interviews. And I get a lot of backlash from the feminazis, mm -hmm. I mean, these women who...